Egypt has accused Netflix of misrepresenting history by casting a black woman to play Cleopatra, its most famous historical figure, in a new series, Queen Cleopatra, which is released May 10, features Adele James in the lead role, a casting decision that the streaming giant says is a nod to the centuries-long conversation about the ruler's race but which officials in Cairo have dismissed as blatant historical fallacy. The government statement issued Thursday marked an escalation in a feud that has sparked demands for the show's cancellation, amid a broader debate over representation in popular culture. The eight-episode docudrama is executive produced by Jada Pinkett Smith. But Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities argued that the documentary nature of the feature requires those in charge of its production to investigate accuracy and rely on historical and scientific facts. Coins and statues from the time show a light-skinned woman, in keeping with Cleopatra's Macedonian Greek ancestry, it argued, Dr. Mustafa Wazari, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities, said in the statement that Cleopatra's appearance in the show was a falsification of Egyptian history and a blatant historical fallacy. He added that his complaint was far from any ethnic racism, stressing full respect for African civilizations and for our brothers in the African continent that brings us all together. Representation of historical figures on screen has fueled heated debates across the world, but especially so in a country with such a rich history as Egypt, which has made its ancient past a huge part of its modern national identity and tourism industry. The famous queen, who was crowned Cleopatra VII and reigned from 51 to 30 BC as its last ruler, was the direct descendant of Ptolemy I Soter, bodyguard to Alexander the Great and founder of the Greek-speaking Ptolemaic Kingdom. After her much-discussed and dramatized death, according to popular legend due to a self-inflicted snake bite, Egypt became a Roman colony, Roman writers including Plutarch and Cassius Dio, known for chronicling the Roman and Greek worlds during Cleopatra's reign, said Cleopatra was light-skinned and of Macedonian ancestry. Other scholars have argued it is possible she could have been one-quarter Egyptian. Egyptians did not bear the features of sub-Saharan Africans, said Dr. Samia Al. Mergani, former director general of the Center for Research and Conservation of Antiquities, in a statement citing evidence from anthropological studies and DNA tests, inscriptions on ancient tombs and statues. She argued, portrayed the ancient Egyptians with features as close as possible to the contemporary Egyptians. She admitted however that there was a great diversity among Egyptians due to the kingdom's fluid, international nature, one of Egypt's most famous archaeologists and twice-serving antiquities minister, Zahi Hawass, was adamant, Cleopatra was not black, if we see statues and forms of her father and brother, we will not find any evidence supporting this claim that she was black, he said in a statement. Hawass added that Egypt at the time of Cleopatra's reign ruled over the kingdom of the Kush, also known as Nubia, in what is now Sudan and southern Egypt, with its distinctive black African culture. But they have no connection with the pharaonic civilization, he said. The creators of a petition on Change.org calling for the show to be cancelled said it had more than 100,000 signatures before it was taken offline without warning. Egyptian lawmaker Sabura Al Sayed this week repeated an earlier call for Netflix to be banned across the country. This is not the first time the casting of Cleopatra has sparked controversy. Israeli actor Gal Gadot made headlines in 2020 when she was chosen to play the role in a forthcoming movie, leading to accusations of whitewashing, writing in Variety last week. The Netflix show's director, Tina Garani, wrote that as a child she watched Elizabeth Taylor's Hollywood portrayal of Cleopatra, but had always wondered about the accuracy of the casting. I was captivated, but even then, I felt the image was not right. Was her skin really that white? She argues that while the queen was descended from Macedonian royalty, Cleopatra was eight generations away from these Ptolemaic ancestors, making the chance of her being white somewhat unlikely. Garani wrote that the casting of a black actor was a political act, one that has seen her become the target of an online hate campaign, why shouldn't Cleopatra be a melanated sister? And why do some people need Cleopatra to be white? Her proximity to whiteness seems to give her value, and for some Egyptians it seems to really matter, she said, James, the actress playing the iconic queen, 
fired back at critics in a recent Twitter post featuring screen grabs of abusive comments that included a racist slur. If you don't like the casting, don't watch the show, she said. Let's see the history of Cleopatra, Cleopatra, in full Cleopatra 7 Thea Philippator, Cleopatra the father-loving goddess, born 69 BCE, died August 30 BCE, Alexandria, famous in history and drama as the lover of Julius Caesar and later as the wife of Mark Antony. She became queen on the death of her father, Ptolemy XII, in 51 BCE and ruled successively with her two brothers Ptolemy XIII and Ptolemy XIV and her son Ptolemy XV Caesar. After the Roman armies of Octavian, the future emperor Augustus, defeated their combined forces, Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide, and Egypt fell under Roman domination. Cleopatra actively influenced Roman politics at a crucial period, and she came to represent, as did no other woman of antiquity, the prototype of the romantic femme fatale, daughter of King Ptolemy XII Alites. Cleopatra was destined to become the last queen of the Macedonian dynasty that ruled Egypt between the death of Alexander the Great in 323 BCE and its annexation by Rome in 30 BCE. The line had been founded by Alexander's general Ptolemy, who became King Ptolemy I Soter of Egypt. Cleopatra was of Macedonian descent and had little, if any, Egyptian blood, although the classical author Plutarch wrote that she alone of her house took the trouble to learn Egyptian and, for political reasons, styled herself as the new Isis, a title that distinguished her from the earlier Ptolemaic queen Cleopatra III, who had also claimed to be the living embodiment of the goddess Isis. Coin portraits of Cleopatra show a countenance alive rather than beautiful, with a sensitive mouth, firm chin, liquid eyes, broad forehead, and prominent nose. When Ptolemy XII died in 51 BCE, the throne passed to his young son, Ptolemy XIII, and daughter, Cleopatra VII. It is likely, but not proven, that the two married soon after their father's death. The 18-year-old Cleopatra, older than her brother by about eight years, became the dominant ruler. Evidence shows that the first decree in which Ptolemy's name precedes Cleopatra's was in October of 50 BCE. Soon after, Cleopatra was forced to flee Egypt for Syria, where she raised an army and in 48 BCE returned to face her brother at Pelusium, on Egypt's eastern border. The murder of the Roman general Pompey, who had sought refuge from Ptolemy XIII at Pelusium, and the arrival of Julius Caesar brought temporary peace. Cleopatra realized that she needed Roman support, or, more specifically, Caesar's support, if she was to regain her throne. Each was determined to use the other. Caesar sought money for repayment of the debts incurred by Cleopatra's father, Alites, as he struggled to retain his throne. Cleopatra was determined to keep her throne and, if possible, to restore the glories of the first Ptolemies and recover as much as possible of their dominions, which had included southern Syria and Palestine. Caesar and Cleopatra became lovers and spent the winter besieged in Alexandria. Roman reinforcements arrived the following spring, and Ptolemy XIII fled and drowned in the Nile. Cleopatra, now married to her brother Ptolemy XIV, was restored to her throne. In June 47 BCE she gave birth to Ptolemy Caesar, known to the people of Alexandria as Caesar Ion, or Little Caesar. Whether Caesar was the father of Caesar Ion, as his name implies, cannot now be known, it took Caesar two years to extinguish the last flames of Pompeian opposition. As soon as he returned to Rome, in 46 BCE, he celebrated a four-day triumph, the ceremonial in honor of a general after his victory over a foreign enemy, in which Arsino, Cleopatra's younger and hostile sister, was paraded. Cleopatra paid at least one state visit to Rome, accompanied by her husband brother and son. She was accommodated in Caesar's private villa beyond the Tiber River and may have been present to witness the dedication of a golden statue of herself in the Temple of Venus Genetrix the ancestress of the Julian family to which Caesar belonged. Cleopatra was in Rome when Caesar was murdered in 44 BCE, if you'd only be my Valentine, American Valentine card, 1910. Cupid gathers a basket of red hearts from a pine tree which, 
in the language of flowers represents daring. Valentine's Day St. Valentine's Day February 14th Love Romance History and Society Heart in Roman Mythology Cupid was the son of Venus, goddess of love. Soon after her return to Alexandria, in 44 BCE, Cleopatra's Coroller, Ptolemy XIV, died. Cleopatra now ruled with her infant son, Ptolemy XV Caesar. When, at the Battle of Philippi in 42 BCE, Caesar's assassins were routed, Mark Antony became the heir apparent of Caesar's authority, or so it seemed, for Caesar's great-nephew and personal heir, Octavian, was but a sickly boy. Antony, now controller of Rome's eastern territories, sent for Cleopatra so that she might explain her role in the aftermath of Caesar's assassination. She set out for Tarsus in Asia Minor loaded with gifts, having delayed her departure to heighten Antony's expectation. She entered the city by sailing up the Sidnus River in a barge while dressed in the robes of the new Isis. Antony, who equated himself with the god Dionysus, was captivated. Forgetting his wife, Fulvia, who in Italy was doing her best to maintain her husband's interests against the growing menace of young Octavian, Antony returned to Alexandria, where he treated Cleopatra not as a protected sovereign but as an independent monarch, in Alexandria. Cleopatra and Antony formed a society of inimitable livers whose members lived what some historians have interpreted as a life of debauchery and folly and others have interpreted as lives dedicated to the cult of the mystical god Dionysus. In 40 BCE Cleopatra gave birth to twins, whom she named Alexander Helios and Cleopatra Selene. Antony had already left Alexandria to return to Italy where he was forced to conclude a temporary settlement with Octavian. As part of this settlement, he married Octavian's sister, Octavia, Fulvia having died. Three years later Antony was convinced that he and Octavian could never come to terms. His marriage to Octavia now an irrelevance, he returned to the east and reunited with Cleopatra. Antony needed Cleopatra's financial support for his postponed Parthian campaign, in return, Cleopatra requested the return of much of Egypt's eastern empire, including large portions of Syria and Lebanon and even the rich balsam groves of Jericho, s. The Parthian campaign was a costly failure, as was the temporary conquest of Armenia. Nevertheless, in 34 BCE Antony celebrated a triumphal return to Alexandria. This was followed by a celebration known as the Donations of Alexandria. Crowds flocked to the gymnasium to see Cleopatra and Antony seated on golden thrones on a silver platform with their children sitting on slightly lower thrones beside them. Antony proclaimed Caesar Ion to be Caesar's son, thus relegating Octavian, who had been adopted by Caesar as his son and heir, to legal illegitimacy. Cleopatra was hailed as Queen of Kings, Caesar Ion as King of Kings. Alexander Helios was awarded Armenia and the territory beyond the Euphrates, his infant brother Ptolemy the lands to the west of it. The boy's sister, Cleopatra Selene, was to be ruler of Cyrene. It was clear to Octavian, watching from Rome, that Antony intended his extended family to rule the civilized world. A propaganda war erupted. Octavian seized Antony's will, or what he claimed to be Antony's will, from the temple of the Vestal Virgins, to whom it had been entrusted, and revealed to the Roman people that not only had Antony bestowed Roman possessions on a foreign woman but intended to be buried beside her in Egypt. The rumor quickly spread that Antony also intended to transfer the capital from Rome to Alexandria. Antony and Cleopatra spent the winter of 32-31 BCE in Greece. The Roman Senate deprived Antony of his prospective consulate for the following year, and it then declared war against Cleopatra. The naval battle of Actium, in which Octavian faced the combined forces of Antony and Cleopatra on September 2, 31 BCE, was a disaster for the Egyptians. Antony and Cleopatra fled to Egypt, and Cleopatra retired to her mausoleum as Antony went off to fight his last battle. Receiving the false news that Cleopatra had died, Antony fell on his sword. In a last excess of devotion, he had himself carried to Cleopatra's retreat and there died, after bidding her to make her peace with Octavian, Cleopatra buried Antony and then committed suicide. The means of her death is uncertain, 
though classical writers came to believe that she had killed herself by means of an ASP, symbol of divine royalty. She was 39 and had been a queen for 22 years and Antony's partner for 11. They were buried together, as both of them had wished, and with them was buried the Roman Republic.